want you to turn in your Bibles. It'll be on the screen, but turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. This is our theme text for the day. I've been on the subject of faith because I believe it's the most profound and important subject you and I can have in our experience with God. We can't even get saved without it. For by grace are you saved through faith. Provisionally, grace is given to us. We have grace. Grace is the provision, the giving of God. The grace of God is His free gift to us. Faith is that which receives the gift. Faith appropriates the provision. Grace is the provision. When God gives grace for something, it's grace towards provision. Salvation is the provision of God by grace, or grace provides. Look at somebody and say, grace is provision. Grace is not the end-all, be-all. Grace is not the final product. Grace is not the finishing of the race. Grace is not the, the actual receptor. Grace is not the thing that makes it come to pass. Grace is the thing that's gift, or the given, or the giving. God's grace, the provision, provided for us. But in order to receive any of the provisions of God, in order for us to receive any of the grace of God, we have to receive the grace of God through faith. Grace is unmerited. means that it was given freely. There's nothing you and I could do to have deserved or earned whatever was given. Salvation is a free gift from God. Grace. The grace of God. Given by God freely. But possessed by us through faith. What is faith? It goes on there in Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10. Or 10, 9, and 10. It says, for by grace are saved through faith. And then it tells us that if we we'll confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus will be saved. So confession is the action of faith. Faith is, is an act. It's something that we do. In Matthew chapter 18, we're given a scripture that clearly indicates to us two distinct things. And I would be wrong, and I always make it a point to make sure that I never miss to tell both sides of the story. I remember years ago when I was growing up in church, pastors would get up and they would command the Holy Spirit. And they would send the Holy Spirit. Well, you don't have the right to send the Holy Spirit. You can't command the Holy Spirit. You have no right to do those things. You can't do that. You don't command God. God is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a uh, lollipop God. He doesn't just hand things out. But He gave us methodology. He gave us purpose. He gave us His Word to tell us. And if we know His Word, there's nothing impossible to us. Nothing we cannot do. Nothing we cannot achieve. Nothing we cannot receive from God. I, don't, I, I know that there are many people in here with many backgrounds with many histories, with, with, with many situations that you've gone through, with challenges that have been completely disruptive to your life and devastating many situations you may have gone through in your life. You may have been abused and mistreated and misused, and, and I don't know how many things could have happened to you. But I do know this. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. And I know that I have a Heavenly Father that loves me, and I know that He forgives me, and He cleanses me. The Bible says from all of my unrighteousness. Aren't you glad to know not one bit of unrighteousness in your life can go unforgiven? God will forgive it all. Amen. Look at someone and say, God forgives it all. Forgives he washes it as far as the east is from the west. But there are two distinct thoughts given in this scripture. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The initial thought process given here through theological debate is that this was a disciplinary situation. And that, that Jesus was discussing with his disciples and with his, with his leadership. He was telling them that, that whatever that they in the future decided as were binding in the church, doctrinally or, or, or theologically, that it would also be bound in heaven. Now, to some degree, I believe that's true. Because if you looked at the, at the preceding passages, you're going to see it talks about church discipline. It talks about how to get along with one another and relational things within the church. And so there's a clear understanding here. We, have to, we can't negate the fact that if we're looking at any pericope of Scripture or any designation of Scripture, that when we look at those things, we must make sure that we're theologically sound in our beliefs. Because I, I tell you, today we live in a world where people want to just throw out theology like it doesn't even exist. But we have to be theologically sound in our thinking. We've got to make sure that we don't say things about God that aren't true. That we don't make God a liar. 
And I see that a lot. So I want to make sure that I don't do that. And so whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is, this, is, this is clearly about discipline. But I believe it's twofold. I do believe also in context of the next passage where it goes on to say, verse 20, if they'll go forward. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Let's go back to verse 18. Verily I say, whosoever, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you, that if any two of you agree as touching anything on earth, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. This is a, this is a discourse about prayer, isn't it? Or about us touching something together. So we can loose things and we can bind things in prayer as well. We have the right to loose things into our life and to bind things in our life. Sickness can be bound in our life. Defeat can be bound in our life. Discouragement, depression can be bound and we have the right to bind it. We can also loose things in our life. We can loose the prosperity of God. We can loose the blessings of the Lord. We can loose our health. We can loose our healing. And we do this through prayer and agreement. Agreement with, with what? Well, the Bible says where any two of you agree. Notice it didn't say you and an angel. Or you and the Holy Spirit. Or you and... It says you and somebody else. Where any two of you agree. Now, I will say this. I believe the highest level of agreement that you and I can have in our lives, in a family condition, is a husband and a wife. There's nothing more powerful than when a husband and a wife will agree. And there's nothing more destructive than when they don't. I tell you now, you get two, two you, know, I, I, you know, Amy and I go through these things. We go through these challenges like anybody else in the room. When we're in agreement, our house flows. And it's wonderful. When we're not in agreement and dad's fussing, mom never fusses. <laughs> It's not flowing. Right. It's disrupted. That's right. And that's disagreement. Yes. And that will bring tragedy because think of the loss that comes through, 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 through a breaking of a home. Think of, think of how many people, let's just take people in the room. Think of the family, family conditions, yeah. that are the, 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 the struggles that children have through breaking of marriages, yeah. through disagreement. Think of how strong a family is and how strong kids are when you and I make a decision as husbands and wives to just simply agree. To just not have to be right all the time. To not have to win. That's right. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just hit on a, I'm hitting a home run right now. I'm telling you, I got up and I just, I just knocked one out in the park. There are, we're sitting in this room today. And I promise you, I know this to be the case in my very own home. If there's one battle the devil wages, and I believe his greatest battle, it is the destruction of a husband and a wife. I believe God, the devil will attack your finances. He will attack your health. He will attack your children. He will attack your home. He will attack your peace. All to destroy the family unit. Amen. Because nothing could be greater in life than to have a husband and a wife who are in love with the Lord and who will make a decision to combine their strengths in agreement. See, the Bible says, how can two even walk together unless Amen. they be agreed? Agreement doesn't mean that we have to be exactly alike-minded. It simply means we have to come to an agreement on whatever is of one mind or the other. Would you agree with that? And so, so, so at times, I found that there are times when I need to bow. There are times when Amy needs to bow. There are times that we need to come to some type of compromise That's right. That's to make right. sure that the house stays together. That's right. uh, I mean, I got in a big one the other day. You don't mind me telling, do you? She loves this. Look at her. She's bowing her head already. I'll get this later. She'll tell me how much she loves me for this. She's sharing her life with everyone. And we got into a big one, and I started yelling. Now, I don't yell much. Why doing it? Oh, thank you. They didn't say anything. I, I, I try not to. I, I mean, I've gotten much better. When we first got married, it was a lot. I was raised in a home where it was almost every day. All we did was yell. And so I've had to work on this. It's been something that she and I have diligently worked on. 
And I have had to work on it more than anybody else. It's just, it's something I've had to really, really control. I have had to take control of a violent, angry temper. Not a physically violent one, but verbally and, and uh, loud. Now, I'm doing great. Y'all, I'm telling you, I'm doing great. I mean, once or twice a year. <laughs> it happened the other day. And my kids were kind of disturbed by all this. They're upset. And they're frustrated with all this that we were fussing. But I took Stephen aside, and he's sitting here, so I'm not embarrassed about this. I took him aside, and I said, Steve, I said, one of the things I know about my parents, and I hope you'll see in me and your mother, is that even though there are times when we argue, we can come to agreement, solve the problem, and stay together. My, my mom and dad, although they argued more than any couple I've ever met, <laughs> managed to stay together and it and and even though it seems like and i would suggest this i'm not saying you should live in this because i think the the, the clear solution here is that husbands and wives should work together to overcome these challenges Amen. to survive these situations yeah. to expose them to deal with them to fix the problems men we need to fix our problems That's right Ladies, we need to fix our problems. Y'all don't mind me going here. I just sense this is God today. There are people sitting in this room, and you may be on the verge of a divorce. I, I, I don't know who you are. I don't know what the challenges you're facing are. But I can tell you this. If you'll remove your pride, I'm just telling you. If you'll get rid of your pride, because the hardest thing for me to do, it's the hardest thing on the planet. Miss Daisy, I promise you, nothing harder. I'm sorry. As God is my witness, I don't think there are three words, I'm two words I'm, that are harder for me to say. And especially when I feel like I'm right. Come on. Man, when I feel like I'm right, I just want you, you know, at what point are you? <laughs> You know, I'm always the way, you know, you know, we men feel this way. It's always, you always want me to say so. When are you? Yeah. That's right, Pastor. <laughs> Husbands, I'm helping you out this morning. Because none of y'all are able to say that. I'll say it for you so your wife can hear me say it for you. No harder words. But the real truth of it is the only reason I won't say them. The only reason that I feel that way is because of the pride that exists within me. The truth is, God said, blessed are the peacemakers. Our job as husbands in our home, if we are the priest or high priest of our home, is to be the lead peacemaker. We are the initiator of peace. We are the initiators of forgiveness. What did Jesus do for us as our high priest? He gave himself for us to initiate our peace that I could receive. And as a husband, a high priest of my home, I am to love my wife and give myself for her as Christ gave himself or loved me to give himself for me. Husbands, listen to me. The salvation of our home is us. The problems that exist, men, you might not like me today, but I love the fact, you look around this church, I don't know too many churches where 50% of the people sitting in it are men. I've been in church my whole life, and I looked around. I think that shows what it is, because I'm a man. <laughs> Y'all know it. <laughs> but what make, I'll tell you what makes me a man. You want the truth? That I'm willing to come off my pride. Real, real man does not mean you have to beat or lord over somebody. Abuse, mistreat. I, I have to apologize to my wife in this room. She left so I can say it without her in here. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have yelled at my wife the other day, not like that, in front of my children. I shouldn't have done that. I lowered her in the sight of my children. And I stand before you today corrected of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But I said this at the beginning. This must have been God starting this service off. Steve, tell them that they can look up to me and they can look past you. Yeah. Amen. I believe that. Amen. Look past me. Just look, I'm, I'm human. 
and, and God will correct us. But men, while I, while I sense the Holy Spirit moving in the way that He is, I sense in this room that the, the devil has fought homes and families and mothers and children. And, and, and I sense one of the parts of our agreement today has to be that your home is stronger than it ever has been. That God strengthens your house and strengthens your marriage and strengthens your commitment and strengthens your, your, your life together and strengthens you to achieve the plan and purpose of God. So the greatest level of agreement is between a husband and a wife. But I believe next to that would be that that you could have within your church with a person who represents you to God. The Bible says that we give double honor to those who stand in a pulpit because they give, they are going to answer for your souls. That means that we have a responsibility as men of God to answer for what we said to you. To answer for it. That's why it's so important to me. I don't take this lightly. When I stand up here, it's huge. And I'm not one of these guys that likes to preach every week because when I go home, I wonder, did I tell you what God wanted me to tell you? Did I say what God wanted me to say to you? Have I exposed you to the Word of God to make you a better person? Have I enlarged your vision and improved your life? And so today I tell you that, that one of the greatest agreements you could have is with a pastor, a man of God that you've called pastor in your life because there's an authority there that God gave. It's a function that God gave to a pastor to stand in agreement with you. And that's what we're going to do today. But in order for this to work, in order for your cards to come true, in order for you to have what God intends for you to have, which is prosperity, health, blessings, healing, deliverance, in order for you to have it, you're going to have to, exp you're going to, have to receive the grace of God. How? With faith. Last week I said two, three things or four things that I want to say again, just in summation. The four things that you're going to have to have for, this to, for you to receive it. We're going to come lay hands on your car, but you've got to have the faith to receive it. Here's, what it. here's what we need to do. We need to speak it. We need to speak it. So as you come through here, you need to make sure you know what these cards say and speak them all the time. You need to act as if you've got it. Last night, I went in and cleaned out my garage. I'm working on my garage. We're believing God for a second car. Amen. 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 That's what so I cleaned out the garage and got it ready for the car. That's right. Heard a man one time say, he said, let's pray for rain. They weren't having any rain. It was a drought. On Sunday morning, they prayed. The whole church prayed Sunday night. And they came back. He asked them where their umbrellas were. Uh -huh. If we believe, then we act it out. Yes. Act it out. Speak it. Act it. Then we receive it. We have to receive it. When God shows us the gift, when God reveals it, we have to receive it. And lastly, we've got to testify about it. We've got to speak what God has done. Let me give you two testimonies this morning of what God has done. You've watched over the last few weeks how God, how I've been working and I, for the several weeks praying, speaking my faith, getting my words in gear because I just knew that there were things we needed to break through. And I really believed that coming into 2014, God was going to break the doors open for us for blessing. That heaven was going to open and the windows of heaven were going to pour. And I believe that. I believe this is a year of jubilee for every person sitting in this room and that the, your best year is ahead of you. I believe that. I believe this is a double portion of anointing and a double portion of power and a double portion of the prosperity of God. God's going to reach. People say that people are talking about the economy and this, that, and the other. I'm not a part of that mess. The Bible says he's never, I've never seen the righteous forsaken and I've never seen their seed begging for bread. The Bible tells me my God shall supply all my needs according... I don't listen to CNN. I don't listen to MSNBC. I don't live, listen to Fox News Channel. I don't listen to ABC. I listen to B-O-K. B-O-O-K. The book. And that's all in the Bible. B-I-B-L-E. And it says, my God shall supply all my needs according to... This is going to be a year of prosperity. If it ain't for anybody else, it will be for me. It may, the banks may close, but my bank ain't closing. Healthcare system may fall apart, but my healthcare system is. Somebody ought to shout out amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a citizen of another country. I'm a citizen of another land. I am an heir of the promise. And for me, this is going to be a year of prosperity. It doesn't matter what the housing market does. It doesn't matter what the stock market does. Amen. Oh, I wish somebody believed with me. I wish somebody believed with me. I'm not looking at the housing market. Doesn't matter where the houses sell. If I were to sell mine, it'd sell. Amen. 
I don't need the world to make it happen for me. <laughs> greater is he that is in me. I told y'all a couple weeks back ago, I was so frustrated. My dishwasher went bad and my washing machine went down. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. I was just upset. Why am I living like this? Remember that? Yes. Every once in a while, you got to ask yourself, why am I living like this? Why am I living in a mess? Why am I living frustrated? Why am I living in a bad marriage? Mm -hmm. I can have a good one. Yes. God can heal this thing. Yes. That's right. So all of a sudden, I just prayed over my dishwasher, stuck it back in the wall, and the thing worked. Miracle, 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 just telling you. But then I thought, I don't know what to do about this, this, this washing machine. So my wife would go wash clothes, that thing would just bang. Bang, 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 bang. You know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about? Just shake the whole house. And I thought, well, we'll get a service guy to come look at it. And then all of a sudden I heard, Tang. <laughs> something had gotten in the water pump. Well, this forced me to take action. I pulled the washing machine out, pulled it out into the garage, and took the thing apart. I took every part off the thing. Found a piece of metal inside that. This prompted me to, to move forward. So I pulled the piece of metal out of my, of my washing machine. I didn't, we were going to go buy another one. I said, before we go buy one, I'm going to take my lazy self out, and I'm going to go do something. <laughs> See, the Lord told me one time I was going to buy a house. And the house was in total disrepair. And everybody told me, don't go buy that. Because you don't know what to do. I had never remodeled a house, never flipped a house in my life. But I was going to go flip houses. And so I'm sitting in a chair one day going to say no to the lady who was going to sell me the house. And I'm sitting there. And, and everybody had told me, don't do it. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to lose, you lose your shirt. You're going to go bad on this deal. And I hear the voice of the Lord in the chair. He said, only through laziness will you miss out on my blessing. I called that lady up that minute, that day, and I said to her, I'll take it. I made $42,000 on that house. $42,000. I felt good. And learned how to flip houses from there and did it several times. And never made less than $40,000 on a flip. All because of I got out of laziness. So I thought about the Lord kind of stirred me. Get your lazy self up out there. Take that thing apart. So I did. Pulled this piece of metal out of, the, out of the pump. And so I called Maytag up and I said, Maytag, how do you fix this thing? They said, we can't tell you over the phone. We're not allowed to divulge that information. I'm thinking, what? I got this thing sitting apart. You know, all I need is to answer a question. How do I make this work? And so I can't get any answers. I read on the internet, it says change the springs, do all this stuff. So I call the company up. I'm going to buy springs. I'm going to buy all this stuff. The, the, the thing on the inside is $310 or something. I thought, well, I could just buy a new one for that. I'm not going to put a new thing and tub in. And so finally they gave me a number. I said, call these people. That they're, they're over in Hartsville. And just talk to that guy and maybe, maybe we, they can work something out for you. So I get on the phone. This guy reluctantly, and I know it was the Holy Spirit, because he's talking, talking, talking. I said, well, I just, I just think I'm going to buy a new one. He said, okay. <laughs> these things have major trouble. He said, the shaft on the inside gets rusty. Take a piece of sandpaper, sand the shaft, it'll be fine. Wow. 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 <laughs> I'm talking about 600 bucks or 500 bucks for a new washing machine, right? Yes, right. And all I got to do, take a piece of sandpaper and sand the shaft off. Wow. I sanded that shaft off for free. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Daddy know how to fix a washing machine. Oh, yeah. And for free, I got my washing machine back. It works absolutely perfect. Ain't a problem with it. I had sandpaper in the garage. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That saved me 500 and something dollars. Took me a few minutes to do that is a miracle. We may be looking for miracles in the wrong places sometimes. I said, man, I could use $500. It was fine. I'll take the $500. It's a little time. I'm done. And see, I'm testifying to you today because the God that I serve is no respecter of person. He's no respecter of person. I changed my mouth. I began to act it out. I began to receive it. 
And now I'm testifying about Amen. it. God wants to change your life. He wants to turn it around. He wants to answer every request you've made on this piece of paper. Everything you wrote down on this piece of paper. Today, if you came in and you've been sitting there, I hope I've planted enough in you that you can start believing God for more. Because if God will fix my washing machine, and if God will fix my dishwasher, and if God will uh, send money through the mail to me, then God will do all of those things for you. Some scriptures. Mark 10, 27. Jesus looked upon them and said, With men it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said to them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Look at somebody and say, all things. all things. Philippians 4 and 13 says this, I can do all things through Christ. Listen to this, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to a power that works in us. Let me read it to you from another translation. The Amplified Bible says this. Now unto him by in consequence of the actions of his power that is at work within us is able to carry us out to his purpose and do super abundantly far above uh, over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers desires thoughts hopes and dreams listen to it from the message translation god can do anything you know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. I want to read a commentary on this, and then I'm done. Here's what this scripture says. We have two descriptions of God. One, a general one. The other, one that is specific and has to do with believers. The first characterizes him as one who is able to do hooper panta, or literally above all things. Thus, in a measure exceeding all things. Beyond all things. And the second speaks of him as being able to do. Hooper K. Parisio. The word is made up of the word parisis. Exceeding some number or measure. Over and above. More and, uh, than necessary. He, uh, which is perfectly in the force here. Intensifying and already existing the idea of the verb. Here adding to the idea of an exhaustlessness of hooper or above. The compound word is the superlative and the superlatives in force. It speaks of the ability of God to do something. The ability of having more than enough power than is an exhaustible power. And then some on top of that. So what Paul says here is, that God is able to do super abundantly above and beyond all that you can ask or think and then some. 